Hello and welcome. If it's your first time watching, uh, my name is Evelyn Knight and I am the host of the Child Care Business Coach podcast and the founder and CEO of Child Care Business Advisors, where we help child care business owners find success while balancing high quality research based programs. So I hope everybody is doing good today. I just wanted to give you guys an update on some of the things I'm working on when it comes to trying to get the word out about of early childhood education and really just trying to get uh, the acknowledgement that we deserve as a profession and for the work we're doing right now. I know uh, the other day on Monday when I popped on, I told you guys about how I had gotten a phone call from one of our state officials and she was absolutely wonderful and supportive and uh, you know, thanking us for staying open and really just encouraging. Uh, but then at the same time, just to recap, I, we are also struggling, right, to find the products we need. A lot of the things are being reserved for the medical field and what is perceived to be a lot of the essential workers. So on one hand, we're being asked to be essential workers, but on the other hand, we're not being treated as essential workers. And it kind of goes both ways. There's different organizations that are really showing us a lot of appreciation and support. And there is a segment of society that's really coming behind us right now, but there's also a segment that isn't. And that really just doesn't see us or uh, even just giving us some pushback. So that's where I decided um, right now is a great opportunity for us, not just because of this crisis, but just in general, if you think about what happened before all of this, right? How we really wanted a voice and how we really wanted to be seen as professionals, right? Before all this happened, it was an issue for us that we really want the recognition as professionals uh, and uh, that we work so hard for. So now is a great opportunity, you guys, for us to unite and get the word out there to really help the world to value us for the hard work that we do and to see us as the professionals we are. And also to really just understand how essential we are to the economy. We're so essential. Not only do we bring over a trillion dollars a year into just the American economy, but people cannot work without us, right? So not only are we contributing by the supplies and goods that we're purchasing as child care centers, but we also provide incomes for millions of people. And we also enable people to be able to go to work. So our industry is vital to the economy. And now is the time that we really need to be loud and clear and make sure that the world hears and sees us. And the way we're going to do that is by uniting as one voice. So I have been working and trying to get in touch with different organizations. On Monday, I told you guys, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do. You can reach out to your lo local news channel. It's as easy. All I did was send an email out. That's all I did. I uh, watch the news. I really paid attention to which uh, newscaster focuses on family issues. And I emailed her and just said, hey, this is my situation. I'm a child care business owner. You know, I would love to be featured in the story because we are struggling. And I just basically told her what we're struggling. So I was talking to uh, somebody from the Children's Advocacy Alliance who is actually getting on board with us and she is gonna help us spread the word about how important our um, our industry is. And she's already doing a lot of the work, but she is gonna team up with me and we are gonna be doing some webinars together that like and advocacy trainings and different things. Uh, but she's going to help me to really just get materials out that we can spread the word with, right? Her and I are teaming up to try and get us the recognition we deserve. And she's such a great person, just really excited to do this. And she's so enthusiastic. I think she'll be awesome to have on board. But I did ask her, like, what are some of the things we can start doing now? And I talked to her about like a template that we can send to uh, like your congressman, your senator, your governor, whoever. And she said, really, the best thing for us to do is to tell our story. She said, what we need to do is 
email your congressman, your senator, your governor, your local state officials, and tell them your story. She said, nothing is more powerful than your personal story of being in the trenches and what we're going through. So on Monday, I started another unit that's called, uh, I think I call it advocacy. And in there, I put a link where you can find, uh, I put actually, I think there's three links, one to how you can find your senator's contact info, one for your, the House of Representatives and one for your local state legislature. And you can go in there and it'll direct you to where to find each one of these people's contact information. So just write a quick email, even if you write it in like a Word document, cut and paste it to each person and tell them your story. What are you going through right now? If you're still open, what struggles are you having? Are you having struggles staffing? Are you having struggles finding supplies? Are you running at 40, 50% capacity? Are you, um, you know, what is going on in your personal struggle right now? And also just in general, what else, like what do we normally go through for the recognition that we deserve, right? So those are the kind of things. If you're closed, let them know you're closed. And if you're afraid you're not gonna be able to come back, let them know you're not gonna be able to come back. There is a lot more money that Congress is looking at on the table right now, another few, like uh, billions of dollars. And we have the choice to um, really just, you know, get in on that, right? To get our field some more of the help that we're going to need coming out of this. We don't know how long this is going to last. You know, so even though it, the PPP loans that have come out and the EILD are nice, we need to make sure we sustain, right? So we want to stay on their radar and we want to make sure that we're not left out. When uh, Senator Chuck Schumer did a speech last week about hazard pay, he was talking about all these industries that deserve hazard pay and he did not mention childcare. It didn't even come up for him. So we want to make sure that we are on their radar. So I really encourage you to, you know, we want those the uh, really be hitting people those even if they are not our representatives we still want to email them like nancy pelosi chuck schumer donald trump those are the ones that are really you know they've got the strongest voices right now so make sure that mitch mcconnell that's another one we want to make sure we're um in their radars so that when these bills are going through they don't forget about us and you know there is enough of us out there you guys that we can have a voice we deserve a voice but we need to unite we really do it's there is power in numbers uh, one of the quotes that i love to use that i've used here before is the helen keller alone we can do so little but together we can do so much so just really think about that there's so much we can do and kate is going to actually help me also with some petitions we can get going around there's a lot out there she doesn't want to reinvent the wheel she's going to find some that are already out there that we can start sharing uh, the naeyc is doing an excellent job of getting the word out for us um so I know uh, Child Care Aware is doing a lot of work. So we really want to jump on their bandwagon too. But like she was saying, there is nothing more powerful than our personal stories. So, you know, to send them a quick email and it's, e make it as easy on yourself as possible. You don't have to write four or five different emails. Just cut and paste the same thing, send it over and over again. That is how we are going to be the most effective. So... The other thing too I wanted to touch on today is I've been going through some of my old materials and I am going to start updating some of the changes I've been making of the, to the original videos I put out. Now that things are progressing and we've been going through this a little bit longer, uh, my staffing, things have just changed, right? I mean, now, you know, we're going into a second month of um, parents not attending. Are we still charging them? Um, what are we still charging them? Staff that has chosen to take layoffs. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to contend with this $600 bonus they're going to be getting once, um, you know, how are we going to get them back when they're making more money on unemployment, right? So I'm going to update you guys on that on in my Friday video 
Um, it was, it's a lot of work, you guys, to be on here Monday through Friday. So I'm kind of just pulling back a little bit to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but just to keep you guys updated. So on Friday, I'm going to just go over some of the updates, what's new, what has been revised in my plan so far. And, uh, you know, the proactive steps we can take to keep trucking, to keep the stress level down, to keep them in the right mindset. I know the longer this goes on, mindset becomes very difficult. It's something that I know I have to work very hard on right now. It's, uh, you know, I just, I kind of had to just keep reminding myself, like, stay focused, stay positive. It's okay. Because the longer this goes on, the harder it gets to stay positive. But that positive mindset and proactive attitude is what's going to get us through this. So say hello if you're on there. I see Sue is watching. Hi, Sue. I missed you last night. Um, Tammy, hi. But um, Sue, I will have that video posted from last night soon. I did record it, so I'm going to get that posted for you guys in the private membership page. But anyway, uh, so if you guys have any questions, anything that, you know, that I have taught on before that I might have changed that is no longer applicable since things are changing so quickly, it's kind of hard for us to keep up right now. So um, I'm going to just kind of go through and update you guys on the things that have changed. If you guys have any questions, if you've noticed certain things aren't working anymore that you know we're working, or if there's just things that don't feel as comfortable, like if you're going into your second month and you're still charging your parents 100% tuition, they might be getting upset about that at this point. Just go ahead and put it in the comments and I will update you guys on what I am uh, changing and doing at this point. Uh, but you know, I'm got to get back to the same, same old message that I've had you guys. We need to protect our centers. Don't apologize for doing what you need to do to protect your center. Don't feel bad about it. We've got to do what we've got to do to stay in business and to make sure that we're still around all, after all this is over. So whether you're still paying, you know, even if you're just charging your staff 20 to 30 or your parents 20 to 30 percent just to stay in business, don't feel bad about that. You're just doing what you need to do to survive. You're making sure that these children have a place to come back to. And we're making sure our staff has a job when this is all over. That's what we're doing, you guys. So I've seen a lot of comments. I've received a lot of messages from people who just feel really bad. And I get it. It's hard. It really is hard. But just remember, if you don't do the hard things now that we need to do, they're not going to have somewhere to come back to. So it is hard right now, right? But remember, a year from now, you're going to thank yourself. And if you haven't written that letter to yourself yet, if you haven't seen my other videos, I've asked everybody to write a letter to yourself. Read a year from now, thanking yourself for doing the things that you know you can do to get through this time. If you haven't done that, I would definitely suggest it as things are getting harder. Uh, just thank yourself for doing those hard things. Thank yourself for standing up you know, for what you believe in, for sticking to your guns right now, and for stepping up to be a leader so that you can make it through this as strong as you can, right? So that you have a business to come back to and that you're not surrounded in debt because you couldn't make it. You know, I mean, that's another thing to really think about, you guys. We don't want to come back from this and be drowning in debt, right? So, you know, do what you need to do right now. Do not feel bad about it. We're just trying to survive. Um, let's see. Heather says, I'm wondering how fall will look. Yes, I am too. We will still have some restrictions. Do I need to rethink my fall class list? You know, what's interesting about that, Heather, uh, I just posted last night a podcast episode of, uh, I interviewed a pandemic expert and he actually specializes in uh, preparing preschools and early childhood programs for disasters, not just pandemics, but disasters in general. But ironically, he specializes in pandemics. And uh, that was very, um, I don't know, the interview left me rethinking a lot. But he does think that we're going to have another surge come the fall. So we have the summer to prepare, you know, just we've got to really start thinking and coming up with a game plan. And I think it's great that you're thinking ahead about that 
and um, that you're starting to plan now because, you know, the, the key to success really, you guys, is not giving up and being proactive instead of reactive. So it's, um, I think, something we definitely should think about. Like, you know, how can we position ourselves so that come fall, if this happens again, if we're in this situation again, again, we are ready. And again, we can be stronger. So by January of 2021, we have stronger, more sustainable businesses that can make it through this. So just, you know, something to think about. I do think we definitely need to have a long-term game plan in hand. Um, after talking to different ex experts, I do think that it, we will probably be coming back May to June. June's looking realistic for a lot of areas throughout the country. I'm hoping here on the West Coast, I think May looks pretty realistic. We didn't get as hit hard as the East Coast. But um, then we got to think about a resurgence in the fall. So we've got to be ready because a lot of the experts I'm talking to and that I've interviewed actually are preparing for another surge in the fall. So we've got to be ready for that because if we have to go through the, you know, can you imagine life gets back to normal and then we get to start all this over again? It's going to be hard. It, it, it's, I think the second time will be a bit harder mentally to get through than the first time. So definitely something for us to be ready, uh, you know, and that being said, it's going to be hard, but we can take actions now so that it won't be so hard. Right, Heather? That's what I'm thinking. When, oh, I'll tell you, when I did this interview, I was just like, oh my gosh, no. It was one of the hardest podcast interviews I've done. Uh, he's got excellent information, but it was really hard just hearing what he had to say, the reality of the situation. But, you know, the more reality we have, the better off we're going to be in the long run. The more we'll be able to plan and be proactive and we'll be ready for this. That's what we really need is just to be ready, right? And hopefully we'll learn from some of the mistakes we made this time. We'll have a better game plan. I think for my members, I... Um, I think over the summer, we will definitely work on a game plan to make sure that we're ready for this come fall in case. And let's hope he's wrong. I hope the experts are wrong. I hope it's not as bad. I hope that they um, acted fast enough, but it's better to be overprepared than underprepared, right? So even if we prepare and we get ready for another surge in the fall and it doesn't happen, at least, you know, we're prepared. And it's it's better than not being prepared and it does happen. So something to definitely keep in mind. And I think that's going to be one of my big focuses in uh, the summer is just coming up with a good, strong, solid plan to make sure that we can sustain and it, make it less stressful than it was this time and just be ready to just go into action somehow. So yes, Corey, we are all in this together. I absolutely agree. And if you guys haven't seen Corey's videos, they are absolutely awesome. She's just full of so much encouragement also. So it has been awesome. But yes, I think, you know, I, we, you guys, I really do think we can all come out of this better. I, I mean, everybody I've talked to in this, the one feeling I really get is a society as a whole, we're really in a good position to be better from this, right? If, even as individuals, if we take the lessons we're learning now, we can come out of this better people. We can come out of this stronger leaders, have stronger centers. So I really, you know, I harp on mindset all the time, but it really is so important. It's how we spin it. I know just from working with you guys and just from some of you I've met through this and started working with, I can already see such a change in you guys for the better. I can see leaders emerging and it is so cool. I'm sorry, I've got to save my my little girl from my puppy. The old dog needs saving. Sorry, guys. But I've seen so many people emerging as leaders and, oop, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. She knocked off my microphone. <laughs> um, so it, having my pugs is like having children. But I think I've seen so many of you guys emerging as leaders, and it's really, really cool to watch. And it's really cool to just see some of the people that I know are going to be future leaders in this space 
that are just coming out and emerging now. It's actually a really, really cool process. Just, I, you know, you just kind of can pick out the people who are going to really just step up and lead. And this pandemic has just brought the right people out. I think it's really brought the right people to the surface and it's just been very, um, I don't know, it's, it, it's a growing experience. Is that going to be for everybody? No, but we do have the choice. We can be better after this, right? We can grow and come back stronger. I just, I really truly believe in it. And that's why I'm dedicated to come on here a few times a week, just because I know that, you know, that we can, we do have the opportunity to make our industry better. We have the opportunity to be better individually and we have the opportunity to make childcare as a whole better. So I am going to definitely capitalize on that and do my part in making sure our industry comes back better. So that's what I have for you guys today. Feel free to post in the group and send me questions throughout the week. I'm happy to answer. And I will, um, again, see you guys on Friday with more information on updates on how things are going and what I've changed. And um, I'll get you guys a schedule once I've got Kate nailed down to do an advocacy training with me so more of us can have a voice and we can really make a difference. Um, the podcast, Heather, the podcast is ready. So I noticed with iTunes lately, they have actually been putting out my episodes pretty late. I don't know why. Um, I go through a platform and then it submits everywhere. For some reason, iTunes is like lagging three to four days. But if you go directly, um, you know what, I'll post it to the page. If I go directly through my uh, provider, I can get it up for you. But I know Stitcher... Um, iHeartRadio, what are some of the other, and all the other big ones have it on pretty much instantly, but for some reason iTunes has been pretty slow on um, getting it up. And oh, something super cool, you guys, if you have Alexa, you can actually ask Alexa to play the Child Care Business Coach, and my podcast comes out now. So. so that is what I have for you. Good night, Sue. Have a great evening, and I will probably talk to you tomorrow. But everybody else, I will talk to you guys on Friday and uh, take care of yourself and make sure to you send those emails. Have a great night.